Okay, now can we turn to Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 13. We, 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 uh, we, that's where we stopped, and that's where we was actually building up some some thoughts. Can we do that? Okay, now, can we read that? Ezekiel chapter 1. As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire, like the appearance of torches going back and forth among the living creatures. The fire was bright, and out of the fire went lightning. Now, we saw the living creature, first of all, is a burning coal. Remember we saw that? What burning coal signify in the Bible? And what does... Remember the living creatures that we saw in the book of Revelation that was, they were enthroning, they were surrounding the throne. This was a, a throne that was stationed. But we saw in the book of Ezekiel, the throne was movable. That's why. And that's why we saw the four living creatures. And, uh, and as we saw the difference within heaven and earth, and that we, 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 saw, we, we looked through why they have four wings, why six wings, all this, we saw that. And we also saw that the appearance of the living creature is what? Burning coal. Remember that? We saw the burning coals, what it does? It removes all your negativities. Remember that? How many of you remember that? It burns all. And secondly, we saw what? It makes you fervent. And we also saw that it also able to produce power and impact. How many of you know that? The more fervency you are inside, the more power and impactable you will be. How many of you understood that? That's what the burning coal is about. So what is God is trying to show the living creature that is actually expressing in the earth. And the living creature is supposed to be the body of Christ. That you and I are the living creature that's supposed to become a burning coal where we will be able to be impactable to others' life. Where a power comes out of our life. Are you with me? That's what burning coal is all about. Okay, now. The other part is that the, it, it also not only described that it's appeared like a burning coal, but the other part was, what's the description? What's the description? Can we read again? And the living beings ran back and forth like balls of lightning. Verse 13, verse 13. As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire, like the appearance of torches going back and forth among the living creatures. What we saw, burning torches. It's not only burning coal, but it also represents a pure like what? Burning torch. What is burning torch? What is torch is all about? What torch does? When the darker moments, when you bring the torch, what? It give you guidance, it give you uh, uh, enlightenment, illuminations, and that's the purpose of that. Am I right? So what is happening here? What is actually the uh, living creature symbolize that we are supposed to bring what? Guidance to others' life. How many of you know that that's what the church is supposed to do? That we become the guidance in the midst of perplex. How many of you know that the pandemic is everywhere, the globe? In the midst of this, many of them in the fear Many have loss of guidance. What's going to be? Uncertainties. How many of you know that uncertainties around the earth? You doesn't know what's going to happen ne next week. Am I right? Everything is uncertainty. But in the midst of uncertainty, where we can give certainty to the globe. Why? Because we know what is God is doing. We become the torch in the midst of darker moment. Where we can give guidance. Are you with me? And that's what is the, the, the living creature is all about. So living creature is about that the body of Christ become the living creature. When I say living creature, we saw the living creature is about the what? The four expression of Christ. When the four expression of Christ form in your life, that you become a burning coal. Not only burning coal, you become what? A burning torch where you give guidance. Where, how many of you know that many of them need guidance in these seasons? What's the next move of their life? They can't predict even about your marriage. You want to plan for your marriage occasion is also unpredictable. How many of you know that? In the midst of these, that only place where guidance can come out is in the church. Are you understand? That's what the living creature is all about. Become a torch, burning torch, where give lights, guidance. And not only that, it also speaks about enlightenment. What is enlightenment is all about? By giving, giving insight, understanding. How many of you have understood? That's what we need. 
How many of you know the church understand what is going through in the earth? This was really prophesied by Jesus. Remember Jesus says, plague, it will happen. Pandemic will happen. That's what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 24. And Paul says, in the last day, there will, 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 uh, 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 parallel times will come. If you read in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, he said, parallel time. The word parallel means it's about demonic moments. When was it? In the last days. In the parallel moment. That's what he was talking about. In the darker moment is where per many perplexity will happen. What? Many pandemics is going to come. You Not know, one pandemic, you know, it's going to be many pandemics is going to come. How many of you know there's a wave of the coronavirus? Now they call it Delta wave. I don't know what, what's the next wave is going to be. All this is predictable that all was been said in the Bible. So what are you and I supposed to be in the midst of this? We become enlightenment to the nations where we can show them what is going to happen, what is the sign of this, where, we are, where earth is going to end, where is the end goal of the, the globe. All these, you and I have enlightenment. And you and I are told to how to navigate our life in the midst of these storms. How many of you know that? The Bible is very clear. When this happens, what Jesus says, lift up your heads and look for the Redeemer. That's the posture of you and me. That means you are anticipating, excited about the Redeemer that is about to what, reveal in the earth. How many of you know that? And also, that is also in the moment of darker moment, Isaiah says that what? Arise and shine, your light has come, the glory of God risen upon you. That's a moment of greater level of revival that's going to birth out of the nations. In the midst of the darkness, God is about to bring His move in the earth. And if you understand, you and I understand that, we can give greater what, enlightenment to the nations. Enlightenment to your surrounding people who are, who are in the moment of what, perplexed fear, anxiety, the, the anxiety, what, lost job, health, Fear, all these are dynamics are taking place in the midst of these. You and I can speak what? Enlightenment into your life. Where we can say is the glory of God is about to release in the earth. How many of you know that the Bible says in the book of Ezekiel, if you read, the water came out of the temple and became what? A river. Where the river passed through nations and bring healing. And that's what the book of Revelation says about. I believe there is a great river of healing that is going to be released upon the earth in the midst of this pandemic. And that's what is, is your enlightenment. When you understand what is the Word of God says, when you have insight and when you walk in insight, you will never walk in fear. When you have enlightenment, what happens? You walk in confidence. Walk in boldness. And that's what the nature of all this. Are you understand? That's what is the expressions of the living creature we are call what burning torch. Are you with me? I believe that nation this, and you need to hear this. Where we become the light in the moment of that. We become the guidance. We become the insight. We become the enlightenment for them. What, what happened? When enlightenment comes, what? Fear no more. Fear no more exists. Fear will not be a part of the equation. Anxiety will not be part of the equation. Because why? Enlightenment. How many of you know light, when light appears, darkness has no what? Effect over that. So ignorance will not be there. Darkness symbolizes ignorance. Darkness symbolizes that uh, we, no, no guide, no guidance, no hope. All these are symbolized of darkness. So when you become the torch, burning torch, that's where what? You remove ignorance. Where, where there's no hope, there's going to be hope. And all these are symbolically speak about this. Remember I says the Bible is like, it's, it's symbolical. When you understand the symbolical, then you will know how to inter interpret the scriptures. How many of you know, I, I remember I say that God always use visualize and he will, out of visualize, he teach us principles. And that's what it's all. All the Old Testament is all about narrative story and uh, symbolical. But behind the narrative story, there is historical event. But behind that, there's many principles that are embodied in the stories and symbolical. That's what the Old Testament. And when you uh, understood when Jesus came, he was talking parable. How many of you understand? Many parables he spoke about. A parable is about a story that uh, relates to that, that context. And he used that to speak many truths out of that. And that's how the Bible is. When you understand this, then it's easy for you to interpret the Bible and you easy to understand. Okay? Now, and we saw the torch. Okay, now let me go back to the other part of that. Okay, can we read again? So I already give an explanation about what is the torch is all, burning torch.
Can we read verse uh, th 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 14? 13 again, 13. As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire, like the appearance of torches going back and forth among the living creatures. How the many of you that, that in the midst of that, there was a fire? You know, the fire always symbolized the nature of God. That's what the Bible says. God says, I'm a consuming fire. How many of you know when God appeared to Moses, there was a burning bush? Fire. So what is happening? In the midst of the living creature, that somebody is dwelling there. Somebody is mingling there. I believe there is a company of men and women that is going to rise where God is going to mingle around that. How many of you know the book of Revelation says about that? Where he was mingling around this, what? The lampstand. When John had his revelation, he saw the what? A son of man that was mingling among the seven lampstands. Do you understand that? It is where God was ministering to the church. That was the book of Revelation. I believe that's what is happening here in, in the book, book of Ezekiel, where God become fiery furnace in the midst of this. How many of you remember when Daniel and his friends, Daniel's friends was thrown in the fiery? But in the midst of fiery, what happened? Three men were thrown. But there was one man appeared there. There was what? Son of man. That was Jesus. I believe that's what is happening. Where the, the, the four living creatures, in the midst of the four living creatures, what is happening? fiery God that was actually moving among them. Why he wants to move? Remember, if you read entire verse of the 13th, the living creature become burning fire because they was what? They were allowed the burning God to what? Mingle among them. And that's mingling that allowed them to become a burning coal. How many of you know that you and I can be, become a burning coal when you allow the burning God in the midst of you? Where you mingle with the burning gods, where you are, the more you mingle with that, what happened? The more you become burning coal. And that's what signifies. So, what is, what's the principle here? In these last days, remember Jesus said that I came to what? Baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Remember, He says, not baptize you with the Holy Spirit, but with fire. I believe that the end time is a move of the fire of God that is going to be in the midst of the church where it be purge many things, remove many things. And that's what is happening. And that's why we saw the four living, in the midst of the four living creature, there's a, a fire that was running around within them. It's a sign of that, it's a what? A fiery of the God that it was, what? Ministering to the four living creature, as we saw in the book of Revelation, where, where John saw in chapter 1 that the, Jesus was sending among the what? Lampstand. The lamb sent signify where he went to chapter 2, chapter 3, he's talking about the seven churches. Remember, he was talking to the seven churches. Before that, he saw a vision that Jesus was in the midst of the lamb stand. Why? You know, why, what's the signify? In the Old Testament, that's what the priest does. Where he goes and trim all the lamb stand in the what? Holy place. That's what he does. The Old Testament become reality in the, in, in the book of Revelation. You understand that? When you saw what is in, happening in the shadow of the Old Testament, it become reality in the New Testament. So what Jesus is down doing? I believe that he's allowing his fiery. How many of you know the very moment when John saw his eyes was fiery eyes? Many times we, we saw Jesus fiery eyes means he's mean anger. No, no, no. I believe that it's not anger. It's a passionate. Passionate over his bride. Passionate over his church, so fa fashion, passionate, his eyes become what? Burning. And I believe that's what is happening here in the, in the Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 13. Where the fire is among the mingling among them in the midst of them, what? Passionate God was trying to minister to them so that they become passionate over him. How many of you know this last day that God wants to bring the church into, be, into a place where they become passionate over him? But only you and I can become passionate when you see the passion of God. How many of you know God is so passionate over you and me? That's why He sent His beloved Son. How many of you know Jesus is so passionate over you that He gives give His what, entire life as a what, ransom in the earth? He's a passionate God. And that's why, I believe that's the revelation that is about to release among the four living creatures.
When I say fall living creature, I'm talking about the body of Christ. I'm talking about the church. Where they go to have a revelation about the passion of God. They become a fiery God. The God will fall in love with them, so fiery, passionate. When they saw that, what happened? They become passionate. They become what? Burning coal. Burning torch. So what's the secret here? Why they become burning coal and burning torch is because in the midst of them, there was a passionate God. The more you understand the passion of God, the more you study the passion of God, you, what happens, you know, the more you will fall in love with Him. Honestly. Honestly. You know, yesterday I was driving, coming to office. I was just praying in the car and I was pondering over the mercy of God. One of the things that dawned to me is about the ark. How many of you know the ark was where the two cherubim facing each other? Where the wings, if you see the ark. And they are facing each other, but they are looking at the mercy seat. And the mercy seat is a place where the blood is been what? Spill over. And when I was praying over that, I wept in the car. Why? I saw the magnitude of His mercy. And I was saying, God, blood symbolizes your mercy. You know, the more you saw His mercy, the more you saw His passion. Now, how, why was mercy was released? Because he was merciful to you. And when you understood that, what happened? That's where you become bur what? burning coal, burning torch. You understand that? What's happening is right now, there is a distorted portrait about Jesus. You understand? If you read the entire book of Revelations, when Jesus appeared in chapter 1, and he spoke to John, and John's Chapter 2, chapter 3 was letters that were supposed to send to the seven churches. But chapter 4 is where John was taken up in the spirit, where he went to, where he had a heavenly encounter, where he saw the throne. And from there onwards, he was seeing entire earth, what is going to happen. From what? From the heaven, he's watching what is going to happen in earth. You know why that was happening? Why that was seal was broken? Yeah, many of them say it is a judgment. Yeah, absolutely it's a judgment. But you need to understand it is not judgment. It's God is redeeming back what he lost. Entire earth is belong to who? God. And, and he's redeeming back his bride, the church. It's a warfare that is, was taking place. The seventh seal was when God broke the seventh seal. Entirely whatever happening is what he's redeeming back the entire globe back to him. And that's part of you and me. And that is the entire book of Revelation. If you see that context, you saw the passionate of God concerning you and me. Passionate of God concerning the globe, entire humanity that you want to redeem back. back. Are you understand? Are you with me? And that's what we saw in the, in the midst of that. Okay? So now, let me uh, conclude that. Okay, I want to go back to where we saw, I want to give you the understanding of the four living creature. Remember, we saw all the wings, we saw the, the burning coal, and all these are the appearance of this. But I want to talk about specifically today about the four appearance. Can we, can we build on that? So, can I do that? Okay, now, I'm going to talk about the symbols or the significance of the four faces. Can I do that? Now, Remember the, the four living creatures are connected with the throne. And we also saw that in the Old Testament, where the tabernacle was in the center, the entire nation of Israel was camped around the what? Tabernacle. What was in heaven was actually was reality in the, in the midst of the nation of Israel. Remember, I saw I expressed to you that I explained to you the four, the four category of group of peoples where they have a banner of lion, ox, man, and eagle. Every tribe, the four, four tribes, where four, within the four, there are three, three by three, 12 tribes. And all of them came around the what? The tabernacle, which was reality of the heavenly expression. And they are supposed to move forward like that. And what happens, we saw in the gospel, the four gospel is also what? Jesus became the Jew and he became the Israelite and he fulfilled what they have failed. We saw that, remember? We saw the four gospel. The Matthew was a lion. 
We saw the Mark was ox. We saw the Luke was a man. And we saw John as eagle. That was a full representation of Christ that was in the heaven that is supposed to be expressed to the nation of Israel, which they never expressed, where Jesus had to become in the, in the form of man, become born as a Jew, as Israel, and he became the reality of the four expression that man supposed to exhibit in the earth. How many of you understood? That was the four gospel is all about. And that's where what happened, the entire what? Things was given to what? To the church. Let me show you that. How the Acts 1 began with. How many of you following what I'm saying? <clears throat> Acts 1, chapter 1, verse 1. The first account I composed, Theophilus, about all that Jesus began to do and teach. Remember, he's talking to Theophilus. Uh, Luke is returning this to Theophilus. If you read Luke, Luke chapter 1, that same person was addressed. And uh, let me not build on who is Theophilus. But look at me, what he was writing there. He says what? About all that Jesus began to do and teach. And what happened? Why did he say that? What all Jesus began to do in the earth and taught is now passed on to the church. That's why he began with Acts. So what happened? The apostle carried out what Jesus had done and what Jesus taught. And the entire globe that all the while the church or history is all about what? What Jesus is, is doing and what is Jesus is teaching. That's what we are doing. And when we are doing that, what happened? We have become the four expressions of what the living creature is all about. Are you with me? Okay, now, let me build on what, what are the thoughts when I want to do that. Okay, now, the four living creature is a picture of our growth in the throne room. What I say? The four living creature is a picture of our growth in the throne room. How many of you know that the book of Revelation says, chapter 4, verse 7, where the four living creatures were surrounding the throne. The one who sat in the throne was the Father and the Lamb. The Lamb is signified Jesus. It was sitting there and was encircled by the four living creatures. They are so dear. Remember I say there was three circles. First circle is the angel. Second circle was the 24 elders. And the last circle, the closest circle was for living creatures. They were so close, and what he was expressing in the throne was emanating out of them. Because of their closeness, because of their connectivity, allowed them to what? Express what he was. That's what the four living creature was expressing. So what are we seeing here? The more you and I connected with the throne of God, the more you will grow what? Into what? These four expressions. So when you say throne of God, are you saying, Pastor, are you saying that you need to caught up heaven and go like John? I'm not talking about caught up. That's one of the experience that God is going to do in this end time. I believe there's going to be many encounters in the church. That many of them is going to be taken up into heaven to have a, really a, a splendor of heaven. That's going to happen. Okay? That's going to be real. But let me talk about reality, practicality. How many of you know that you and I are, can approach the throne of God 24 hours? Do you know that? Because the blood of Jesus has opened up the gateway for you and me to enter the Holy of Holies. That's what the Bible says, Hebrew says that. And let me read Hebrew chapter 4, verse 16. Therefore, let, uh, let's approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace for help at the time of our need. Now, very interesting. I can break down the entire word by word. But let me say, it says, approach the what? Throne of, not wrath. Not throne of judgment. Throne of grace. Now, let me tell you, that is how God is. Many of them say the Old Testament God is a God of wrath. No, it's lie. The Bible says that his anger just for a while. But the Bible says his mercy endure forever. And what is happening here? We, 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 we have a distorted understanding. You and I can approach a throne of grace where you can receive grace in the time of need. That's what the Bible says. 
That means whenever the very moment that you are in the closest moment where you are in a quiet place, where you engage yourself, close your eyes, and you're talking to God, do you know you're literally actually existing uh, access to the throne of God? That is a reality. But many of them doesn't know that was not reality because we think that it's not. But the very moment that you and I close eyes and say, God, I'm coming to you, that very moment you're already near the throne. Maybe you ask me why. That's what the Bible says. Hebrew chapter 4 verse 16 says that we can come boldly to the throne of grace. In, in the time of need. That's what the Bible says. You can, boldly means, you can go boldly. That means without fear. Why? If that's just true, then every time when you approach in prayer, you're actually approaching the throne. Then why are you not experiencing the throne? Remember I taught about the five senses? How many of you know that you need five senses in order for you to do what? Involve in the earth. Am I right? Five senses is your, uh, your seeing, hearing, smell, taste, touch. All these are five senses. Why? The five senses is given to you, humans so that we can relate to the earth. But you must understand when you want to relate to the heavenly realm, there is also called five senses. A sense where you can see, you can smell, you can touch, you can do that. How many of you know the very moment you enter into a time of prayer, you can hear, you can see? Because if your senses are developed, what happens? We are not developing the senses. That's why we are not able to what? Experience the throne. Okay? So what are we seeing here? The four living creatures is a picture of what? A growth of yourself to the throne of God. So what's happening? The more you go attached to the throne, the more you approach the throne, what happens? The four expression of Christ is been developing it has been what? Deploying inside you. Are you with me? And that's what, what one of the uh, things that I want to highlight. The second thing that I want to highlight that the, there are four stages of Christ coming forth through you. Not only you going to the throne of God, where you are attaching the throne of God, where you're coming closer to the throne of God, but Christ is what? Trying to what? Penetrate to you and allow His expressions to become displayed through you. There's two-way communication. How many of you know the prayer is two-way communication? It's a dialogue. It's not monologue. Many times our prayer becomes monologue, where you talk to God, but the other side, you doesn't know where, you can't hear God. How many of you know God is literally speaking to you and me, day and night? He's speaking to you. This morning, He spoke to me, many things about it's a dialogue. Are you with me? Where you talk to God, God talks to you. That's what. So when you're approaching the throne, you are what? It's your growth is happening. But as you grow, He is also approaching you where He is developing Himself through you. How many of you know Christ wants to display through you and me? And that's what that's what's a principle that I see in where the living creature is what? Surrounding the throne. Okay, now. Let, let me, let me hi, uh, highlight some more. Remember the four living creatures was a four expression of people. One, it was a lion. Am I right? And number two, we saw it's an ox. And number, number three, we saw it's a man. And number four, we saw it's a what, flying eagle. Now look at me. The four faces was a four four expressions of kingly dynamic. Why am I saying kingly dynamic? Lions what? It's a king of the beasts. Am I right? And ox is what? It's also king of what? Domestic animal. Do you know that ox is a, is a king for the domestic animal? And what about man? Man was what? King over creation. That's what God says. What? Let us make man in our image that he will what? Domain the earth. He's supposed to be king. What about eagle? Eagle was a king among every bird. So are you seeing that the four expression of the what, living creature is, is, is releasing a, a dynamics of a kingship? And that's what you and I. So what's, that, what's the principle behind that? In every seasons of life, Christ would like to express himself in this four living creature. And out of the four living creature, he's expressing what? 
the kingly expression in the, in the, in the moment that it's necessary to happen. Are you getting what I'm saying? I know that it's something that you need to ponder over. That's what it's all about. So there are moments where God wants to express as a kingly lion through your life where it's necessary in that season that you're supposed to be. There are times that you want to be expressed as an ox, but he also a, 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 an ox that he is expressing a kingly, but in a different context, in different seasons. Are you looking at that? So all of the four expression was a kingly expressions. When he expressed kingly means, that means when you talk about king, am I right? How many of you know that the Bible says that you and I are made to be king and priest? There was a book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 6 says it. He make us king and priest. So if the four expressions of that expression of Christ is expressing kingly expressions, if you are king, there must be a domain, right? Correct? If you are king, there is a sphere of, in your life, right? So what's your, what's your sphere and domain? I want you to think, what's your domain? Your domain is your family. As a man, that your family is your, that's where you represent as a king, your domain. Are you with me? What about wife? Yeah, you also express as a kingly. It's a family. It's one together. And what about other things? It can be a working environment. I will, I will, I will, I will give you some alignment concerning this. I'm just giving you some um, a kind of a, a bit of iceberg. Okay, I will give you detail about this. What am I saying that? So there are many places that you have a domain. Are you with me? Domain over your family. Domain over your, your, your working place, your call, ministry, so your, your part of your domain. That's a place where you're supposed to express kingly. Are you with me? How many of you understood that? It is, it, what we are seeing in the heaven, it must be reality. That's what God was trying to work with the nation of Israel. But they couldn't understand until Jesus had to come and what? Complete what they, they are supposed to do. And that's where he handed over to the church. Where we are supposed to become the expression of that. Are you with me? So what are we seeing? The four expression is what? Narrow down one thing. Kingly. Okay? So in the seasons of time where he wants to express as ox. In the season of time that he wants to express as an eagle. In the season of time he wants to express as a man. But there are seasons where he defined. Are you with me? Okay now. Let me, let me go some more. Remember that uh, the, the difference, there's a difference here, if you see in the book of Ezekiel and the book of Revelations. Can I show you something? Okay. Go, go back to Ezekiel. Chapter 1, verse 10. Now let us do a comparison here. As for the likeness of their faces, each had the face of a man. Each of the four had the face of a lion on the right side. Each of the four had the face of an ox on the left side. And each of the four had the face of an eagle. Now let, let us see the, the order. In Ezekiel, we saw man, lion, ox, eagle. That's what the order, right? But let us go to the book of Revelation chapter 4, verse 7. The first living creature was like a lion, the second creature like a calf, the third creature had a face like that of a man, and the fourth creature was like a flying eagle. Do you saw the order there? Why? Eh? Why? Remember, you need to understand. Remember, I say the context. Where was it happening? One was in heaven, one was in earth. So when he's here, when the, when in, in, the, in the place of Ezekiel, that was in the context of earth. That means there is something that God wants to convey to the earth. That means what? A man that's supposed to come. That's what the appearance of a man. 
And we read that, the, the Bible says that the one who sit on the throne was appear like a man. So Jesus had to come as a man so that he can, he can what, minister to the humanity. That's why the first expression was a man. And he was a lion. In the midst of man, he became a man in earth, but he was a lion. He was domaining. Why? Man supposed to domain. Remember, he says, let us make man in our image and he will domain the earth. Which man failed, now what? The second Adam called Jesus came as a man. He became a lion in the earth. He was domaining over everything. He domained the nature, he domained the demonic, he domained the disease, everything, even the sin. Do you saw that? Thirdly, he was ox. Not only he was a lion, domaining, but he was a servant. Remember, he says, Son of man appeared not to be served, but to become servant. Are you seeing that? Thirdly, he was an eagle. Remember how many of you are eagle? Eagle means he was more prophetic. He, he says, what the father say, I hear and do. What I, I saw the father does, I does. So he was a what? eagle that was living in the earth, but he was flying in heaven. How many of you know eagles flies? That's where it's the domain of the eagle. Eagle domain was in the air. So Jesus was in the earth. Remember, that's why in John chapter 3, he says, I, the Son of Man went to heaven and he was in the earth. That's why he said, he was saying, I'm in the earth, but also I'm touching heaven. You know, that's supposed to be you and I supposed to live. That's what the order, you saw that? And we'll be seeing the order. Are you with me? So what about book of Revelations? Why lion? He has finished everything the Father wants him to do. That's why the cross is saying, it is finished. And he became, that's why he says what? All authority in heaven and earth is given to me. Go. That means what he says, I'm now a king. I'm giving you a, a delicate authority to you. How many of you know the king that can actually delegate Kings among them. That means princess, prince. And that's what is happening. That's why he was expressed as lion. Then what, what about ox? In the midst of a king, he also have a servant heart. Are you with me? What about man? How many of you know that the father is absolutely God? The Holy Spirit is absolutely God. But Jesus was absolutely God and absolutely man. Do you saw that? You know, that was a sacrifice that Jesus did. He was God in eternity. But when he came to earth, he became fully man. He became a sacrifice for man. He died. He rose. And he ascended as a man sitting on the throne. That's the reason why Jesus is coming back to the earth as a man again to rule and reign the earth with the humanity. That's called millennium. How many of you understood that? That's why the figure of man is there. Third, he was eagle. Why? Where's eagle? Again, again, Eagles, you, I, I will give you a definition when I talk about the, the feature of eagles. I'm just giving you a, a bit of that. So what eagle does? Fly. How many of you know eagles have very sharp eyes? They can see far, very far. So what is happening here? Here we saw that Jesus is actually saying that he can see your, your future. How many of you know when John was... When the very moment he saw, he saw Jesus, he, he fall like a dead man. And Jesus says, what is he say? I did, I'm dead, but I'm alive. But the key of Hades is upon me. Then what he's trying to say is, John, don't be afraid. The future is in my hand. I know what's the, the past. I know the present. I know the future. I'm about to, I'm about to see. I see the future. I know. And that's what he said. Are you seeing that? The book of Revelations and the book of Ezekiel is totally different. It's one of them is the context of earth. One is heaven. 
Okay? Okay, now, let me build on something. So, what is man? So, why is it man comes? Uh, man means what? Jesus has to become incarnate and become a human. That's what the book of Philippians chapter 2 says. He became what? Human. And lion refers to what? He also was a human. He was walking in the power and courage and authority of God in the earth. And what about ox? He became the, the sacrifice, ultimate sacrifice for the humanity. And what was the eagle? After he was sacrificed, he rose, resurrected, he ascended, he became not only fully man, he became fully expressed, the God hate with God, the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit. Are you with me? How many of you seen that? This is entirely what that all Ezekiel all about. Okay, now, let me go into what I'm, oh, wow, looks like I'm, maybe I, I, I'll, I'll do two things. Okay, I'll, let me I'll talk about lions quickly. I'm going to talk about two things, lion. Can I do that? Lions, okay, two things that I want to talk about. One is the attitude of a lion, and the other one, the authority of the lion. Can I do that? Okay, now, when you see as a lion, what, what, what comes to you? Okay, let us read Revelation uh, chapter 5. Then I began to weep greatly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or to look into it. And one of the elders said to me, Stop weeping. Behold, the lion that is from the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has overcome so wow. as to be able to open the scroll and its seven seals. Now look at me, very interesting. What's happening here? When John saw what has happened, he began to weep. Remember, John is having an, uh, an experience and what? It's a tour guide. You know, tour, he's having a tour in heaven. And in the midst of that, the, where, that's where he saw this picture. Why? Why? The scroll. How many of you know what a scroll is all about? The entire scroll was about the title deed of the earth. What the earth is going to be? And what is the end of the earth? Oh, that's a scroll. How many of you that every human being has a scroll? Do you know that? You read Psalms 139. Very clearly it says, David was saying that you have written me in your scroll. When he said written means what? He was talking about when he was forming in the mother's womb, every, every what? features of him was forming that was already written in the scroll. That's what David said that. So here this a scroll was a title D of heaven and title D of earth. What's happening here? John wept. When John wept, what happened? The elder says, why are you crying? Don't worry. What's our answer? The answer is what? What he says? Let me read. Huh? And the one of the elders says to me, stop weeping. That means what? Stop weeping. Don't worry. Let's answer. Okay, then he says what? Behold, the lion that is what? From the ripe tribe of Judah and the root of David has overcome as so as to open the book and its seven seal. Now look, look the way that the, the elder described Jesus. He says, behold, the lion. We saw the living creature also was a lion. And not only that he says the lion, then he says what? That is from the tribe of Judah. How many of you know the tribe of Judah? The banner of Judah is lion. Are you with me? That's what he's trying to say. And he says, he has overcome. Now look at me, the word, the interesting word overcome means, is the word Greek word Nico. You know the word Nico, where they, out of the Greek word Nico comes Nike. How many of you know the Nike shoe? Nike, right? Shoe. You know what's Nike? It's called Nico. You know what is Nico? Nico is a Greek god. Ancient days, Greeks have a god called Nico. You know what Nico means, you know? God of champion. God of conquering. And that's what Nico means. That's why when you buy, when we, 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 Nico is being translated to be Nike. 
So that's what is. So here, that's a word that was mentioned here. That means there is a God of victory. Is there? Is the Lamb, the tribe of Judah, the Lion? Who is the Lion? Jesus. That He is a God of victory, God of conquer. So whenever you look at lions, one of the things that resembles out of a lion is what? Conquer. Am I right? Lion. Whenever you like look at lion, is one of the, uh, the one of the symbolically we, we can address that is what conquering, or domain. Am I right? Or you can talk about strength, power, or lion means we can talk about reign, royalty. So when he says lion, the tribe of Judah means, the lion means what? It means what? A, a person has power to domain. A person is what? Is royalty, strength, power, reign. And that's what the lion symbolizes. So when the four living creature, within the four living creature, there's one creature was resembling lion is what? The one who sits at the throne is the one is, <coughs> is what? Qualified to what? Domain, rule, conquer the entire globe. Are you with me? And the lion also symbolizes the strength and the power. It symbolizes authority. It symbolizes what? The reign. Okay? Now, let me talk about two attitudes. Uh, 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 no, sorry. Let me talk about the attitudes and authority of the lion. Can I do that? I can build on lion about lion. How many of you know that the entire from Genesis to Revel Revelations? you can actually track about the spirit of lion, you know. I can show it to you. This morning I was praying and seeking the Lord. You know, the Lord was actually navigating me the entire Bible in my prayer. From Genesis to from Genesis from all the way to Revelation, He was showing me this other portion of the scripture that shows about the nature and the feature of the lion called conquering and reigning. Okay, now, let me talk about the attitude of a lion. Okay, now, we were going to look at uh, two scriptures, then you will, we, we will be able, able to understand something. Can I do that? Okay, now, we turn to Proverbs chapter 28, verse 1. The wicked flee when no one is pursuing, mm. but the righteous are bold as a lion. The righteous are bold as a lion. Now, look at me. It talk about bold. Now, look at me. Bold is something, it's about... Attitudes, am I right? How many of you know the lion is so bold? You know, the, the tallest animal is not lion, you know. Giraffe. The biggest animal is not lion, you know. Elephants. How many of you know that? In spite of all this, there is a tenacity within the lion... There's a boldness in the lion where he has an attitude of boldness. What makes me attitude? Remember, your attitude is what? It's a product of your belief. Am I right? The, the Bible says, how a man thinks that's what will be. So the boldness came out of what? A belief that within he, the person. Am I right? Am I right? Correct? So where the lion is boldness, there is an attitude within the lion. What was the attitude? I can take anyone. In spite they are bigger, in spite they are taller, no matter what, I'm able to take them down. And that is the conviction of the lion. And that's the attitude of a lion. That attitude of the lions bring that to a place called boldness. That's why it's bold to what? Even go against the, the what? Bigger elephants. Taller animal, giraffe. Whatever animal you call it's bold enough to what? Even the crocodiles. Do you know that? That shows an attitude that was built inside the lion. What was the attitude? I can take anybody out. Because of that attitude, that attitude produces a boldness. The question is, what's your attitude? I say the, your attitude is supposed to be the byproduct of your belief. What's your belief? The Bible says that you are more than a conqueror. Am I right? You know, the word more, the word conqueror means, again, Nico. 
That means what is uh, Paul is trying to say to the Roman church. Roman church, uh, let me tell you something. The Greek believe there is a Roman God that is called Nike, Nico. Nico. They have a belief there is a God called conqueror. But let me tell you, uh, let me tell you, you are more of a conqueror. That means you're more conqueror than the God, the Greek God. That's what he's trying to say. Why? The conqueror that's inside you call what Jesus. Remember, Jesus says, I have conquered the world. So what's a belief? If you believe that you are a conqueror, you have a conqueror inside you, then there is a tenacity, boldness inside you like a lion. Am I right to say? Remember, I says your belief systems develop your attitudes. Correct? You will believe. Remember, let me, let me give uh, numbers. Turn to Numbers chapter. Very interesting. I was just glancing through. Numbers uh, chapter 13. Verse 33. Remember the spies were sent. How many of you remember the spies? The 10 spies were sent to what? Canaan to spy over. And they brought the report. What was the report? Can we read that? Numbers chapter 13. We also saw the Nephilim there. The sons of Anak are part of the Nephilim. Mm. And we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. What he says? We saw the Anak, Nephilim. You know, Nephilim means what? You know, giants. If you read, when you want to go to the history of Nephilim, you have to go to Genesis chapter 6. It's where? Nephilim are giants. You know, when I say giant, it means that they can be 9 feet, 10 feet. And when the Israelite spies went there, and they was giving good report, after that, the last part of the day, they says what? We saw giants, Nephilim. But in our eyes, we were grasshopper. Grasshopper mentality came upon the Israelite. What they believe that produced fear inside them. That's why they were terrified. Yeah, after this chapter, chapter 14, you read the entire chapter, there was, there was a commotion was going on. There was against it. Moses says, we cannot, we cannot go because we are grasshopper. We know that we will definitely be defeated. Because what, what they believe and that's what they become. But look at that. In, in the midst of these ten spies, there's two guys was there. Okay. Let us read Numbers chapter 14. I want to show you what, what was this, this guy's expressions. Numbers chapter 14, verse 9. Because of time factor, I just want to... Only do not rebel against the Lord, and do not fear the people of the land, for they will be our prey. What he says? They will be our prey. That means what? These two guys have a what? Not a grasp of a mentality, but lion mentality. They say, do not fear. You know, the entire commotion was going on. You know, there was rebelling against Moses. There was a commotion was going on, and these two guys rose quiet them and says, now let me give you an understanding. Don't worry. Why? Because God promises that. Their belief was basically, basically built on the promise. What the promise was, God says, I will give you the land of Canaan and I will drive them out. That was a promise. Based on that promise, they built on their belief on the promise and that promise built them what? To become a tenacity Bold like a lion. That's why they declare and says they are like a prey. You know, the other version says that their shadow is no more. You know what I mean their shadow is no more means? They are dead persons. Dead persons have no shadow, you know. That's a, that's a bold statement they are saying here. What was them make them to become bold like a lion? What the attitudes of lion was expressing to them because their belief system was built on the promise of God. God will do that because God promised that He said that He will give us the land of Canaan. How many of you know the Bible says give you many promises? The Bible says that you're more than a conqueror. The Bible says all things are possible for those who believe Him. That means all things are possible, means all things is possible. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. That means I can do. Am I right? 
These are the uh, promises that you accumulate in your mind that become your convictions, that become your belief system. When that belief system comes inside you, you have a tenacity bold to face every situation of your life. Then you become lions. Are you with me? You know, yesterday night, my wife was speaking to me a lot of issues. And then uh, she slept. I was lying down. I wake up in the morning. I went to God. I say, I know God. I know everything is possible. Why? Because I have God who can do impossible to become possible. Because I build, build on the, the principles of God. That was giving me tenacity to face every situation. That gave me boldness to face every storms of life in me. So when I say the living creature is supposed to be formulate inside you means you become lion in the midst of the storm. That's why the lion okay, says, let me face the, the, the elephant. Bigger than that. So many, many issues of your life that's bigger than you. Beyond your what? Capability. Beyond your what? Capacity. But remember, the one who's inside you is much more greater than is inside you. If you believe that promise, then that promise is built inside you. If there is a belief system out of you, out of that you will have a tenacity and boldness to face over that and you can overcome that. That is the nature of a lion. That's why lion does not fear. Let me show you another verse. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 30. Very interesting when I read this verse. Can we read that? 30 and 30. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 30. 30, 30. Ah, 3, 0, 3. Ah. The lion which is mighty among animals. Okay, the lion is mighty among animals. And does not retreat from anything. Does not retreat. That means there is no giving up. You know what boldness means, what? Refuse to what? Retreat. That is what's boldness. Boldness means I will never give up. I will pursue this. I will persist in this. And that's what the boldness is what? And that means lion was a boldness. How many of you know that? In spite, is a, there's a bigger elephant. It's tackled against. Even the, the elephant what? Uses strong to hit. What it does? Does it retreat? Does it run away? No. He doesn't refuse to our retreat. That is called boldness. That means in lives, there are many challenges, storms that is going to come in your life. Either you can retreat, give up, or you can be like a lion, boldly, says, I will never give up. I will overcome this. I will, can overcome this situation. I can overcome this. I can overcome this because I can do all things through Christ. Because all things are possible because there's a possibility God is there. Are you with me? If that is inside you, build inside you, that's a belief system inside you, you will face every storm of your life. You will turn over, uh, t- turn over this and to become a victorious for you. And that's what he's talking about. That's why the lion never retreat. He says, I am, I, this are pray for me. I would just tackle. Whether it's bigger, taller, huge, whatever it is. Are you with me? That's why he was king over the jungle. Look at me, it's not a bigger, it's not taller. It's not how big you are, how big you are inside you. Lion heart, lion attitudes. Remember who is inside you. The one who is greater than the world. That's what 1 John chapter 4 verse 4 says. He's greater. He's greater inside you. He's greater inside. He's with you. You can actually but part, partner with him and tackle the issue. <laughs> Are you with me? Lastly, I want to talk about authority. You know, how many of you know? Okay, let me read Amos chapter 3. Verse 8. Amos chapter 3, verse 8. Let me conclude here. A lion has roared. Who will not hear? The lion has roared. Now, historically, 
And uh, if you study the Discovery Channel, the roar of lions can hurt until five miles. Five miles. You know what? When the roar of lions hurt five miles, every animal terrified. You know, every animal terrified. Very moment. People who discover you have studied this, when the very moment lion roar, many of the animals become panic, paralyzed. That's one of the ways that it attack his prey. So what are we seeing here? We saw the attitudes of the lion that is believed that I can overcome everything. And because of that, there's a boldness coming out. But there is a roar. The roar is symbolized the authority of the lions. He is not only saying that I can win everything, but he says, I am the king, I am the authority. By roar, he's actually sending a message to the entire animal and saying that the king is coming, terrify, respect me, honor me. And that's what he's trying to say. And that's what Amos chapter 3 says. When God roar like a lion, you understand? You know, that's, I was studying about this. I, I found that when the lion roar, it, you know, it's what he's trying to say. His entire place is mine. Roar is a sim, symbolically, the, a lion says, this is a territory of mine. So when the lion roar, it says this entire place is belong to me. That's a roar. You understand what I'm saying? So now, let us bring into our application. So what does that mean? What that means? So how do you roar? You are supposed to be a lion, right? The Bible said God roar. Can we read again Amos chapter 3 verse 8? A lion has wrought, who will not fear? The Lord God has spoken, who can do anything but prophesy? Prophesy. So what is, saying, the, uh, uh, prophe- what is prophesy? Uh? Speaking over what God is saying. So the roar of a lion symbolizes that you are speaking what God is saying about your life. You are speaking what the Word of God says about you, who you are, what you are, what you're capable to do. You are declaring over that over your entire family. You're speaking to your family and say, you're speaking to your children's life and saying you're roaring. And as you roar, that world comes into a rain. How do you roar? By speaking what the Word of God says about you. How you roar? How you, well, you prophesy? When I say prophesy, it means you're speaking over the mind of God, the decisions of God, the will of God, desire of God over your life, over your family and say, this is what God says about me. This is what my family is going to be. This is what God intend about me. When you roar, the, the, what happened? The enemy has no power to but bring distract or destroy your family. Because what? The roar itself says that I'm a king. I have authority. The law itself says that all these jurisdictions belong to me, under me. So how do you basically define your jurisdictions? By what the word of God says. Remember, my family is given by God. Am I right? I suppose to roar over my family. None of them can supposed to come. Any, no intruders has no power over my family. Even the morning heaven and realm has no power over me. I will speak destiny over my children. I speak destiny over my wife. You ask them. I will lay hand and speak destiny. I lay hand and speak a destiny. I spoke what God, God wants me to speak. I speak what the word of God. I roar upon them and says, as I roar, whatever enemy is trying to bring distract over the life, the devastation in your life was no power because my roar is a power over them. And that's what lion does. It terrify. You know, the, the, the Discovery uh, Channel says, when the lion roar, you know, the enemy will come to a place of no who's in charge. 
That's what does. So how do you roar? By worshipping the Lord. How many of you know when Paul and Sila was worshipping in the midst of the prisons, they was raw like a lion. What happened? Entire prisons break down. How many of you know the Bible says in the midst of the praise of Israel, God will enthrone. So your praise become raw. Where as you roar in your praise, what happened? The King of Glory will come and enthrone in your home. Come and enthrone in the midst of your situation. And as you come and enthrone, that's where what? The power of enemy no more exists in your life. The power of enemy no more what? Power in you. Whatever situation is, whatever circumstance, whatever storm is, has no power. Because why? The one who is greater than the storm is in, what? Is there. How many of you know in the midst of the storms where the, the, the disciple was traveling, storm was coming, so waves are coming in. The boat is supposed to sink. One of them just lying down. Oh, Jesus. The entire people are pan panic, perplexed, fear, terrified. All of them says, and went back to Jesus says, Jesus, could you not know that you are going to die? He wake up, and the Bible says he rebuked the wind, and he calmed the storm by saying, peace. That is raw. Speaking what God has given to you. Authority. Now look at me. Whatever domain. Remember I said king must have domain. Your domain is your family. Domain is your workplace. Maybe he says, Pastor, I'm just a normal or ordinary man, but there's somebody superior than me. But remember, you are a lion. You can roar. How many of you know that if you read Genesis chapter uh, Genesis, where Joseph was a lion roaring in the midst of the famine, there was a pharaoh, there was a man highly was praised there. But highly praised man was not was doing anything. The one who below him was what Joseph. He entirely structured the entire nations. He was a lion that's raw. How many of you know in the book of Daniel where all the what? He went, the king was there. Was there. The, who was raw? Five king came in the, in, the, in the season of Daniel. Who was roaring? Daniel. Do you saw that? Not matter who is there. When you roar, God will give you wisdom. When you speak, God will give you understanding. Entire management says, hey, your idea is good. Your things you say, what is inside? I think we will, we, will, we will implement that. Because you're roaring. How you roar when you are close to the throne. When you're close to the throne, you speak what God wants you to do. Concerning your family, concerning your business, concerning everything. God can give you an idea, strategy where you can roar. That will what? Bring what? Prevailing in every area, where prosperous will come. In all this, that's what raw. That's what lion does. He doesn't go and chase after, just raw. Are you with me? So we saw two things, attitudes and authority. 